Hi, I'm Dr. Gabby Cora and welcome to my show, Dr. Gabby's Take, Make Life Interesting. I realize you've done a lot of work. One of the things that came up during uh, another of the interviews was um, how this uh, male gay couple um, struggled with some of the government agencies because they were not used to dealing with gay couples. Um, so they were not giving this wonderful um, explanation that you're giving. You know, it's like they're, they're different kinds of parents. Right. You know, sometimes there's a mom and a dad. Sometimes there could be two dads. Sometimes there could be two, two moms. Sometimes grandparents may take care of the kids. Uh, is there anything else that, that you could, um, or, or that you've encountered uh, with some of, of these agencies, or do you think that they were well prepared? The hospitals seem to have been well prepared. Well, hospitals were great. We are so fortunate living yeah. in South Florida because we really are in a very liberal bubble. Florida in general is not liberal at all, and in fact is very conservative. Pretty much. Um, when it comes to a lot of social issues and gay issues, gay rights. No, it's a, a very different thing outside of South Florida. Um, so we were very, very fortunate. But I, I do remember a situation when we went to the post office. We had to apply for, post, uh, for um, passports for our kids. And um, it must have been the first time that this particular postal worker, because they had passports actually when they were born, but you had, for some unknown reason, you have to go back if the picture is too young. And then, so we had to, we had to get new ones for, for the kids and update their photos. So we went and this particular postal worker thought it was really strange that we were two women with our three kids. And then thought it was even more bizarre that there were two female names on the kids' brand new birth certificates that we'd worked so hard to get. So we went through this whole adoption process to be able to have both of our names on their birth certificates and you know to be legally both parents. And then, I mean, the negativity that was coming from this woman, because she just she, she knew that the, the rules had changed and the laws had changed, so it wasn't that she was preventing us. She from was doing not it. prepared. Though. She was just yeah. not going to smile and she was just not going to be happy through it. And I'm so pleased to say that that was um, the most complicated negative thing that we've had to face because there are lots and lots of other gay couples, gay people, gay families um, in America and around the world yeah. who have much worse. Is there choices. anything else that you would like for gay families to be able to get along the way that that you feel you're not, you know, gay marriage? Yeah. I mean, marriage is very important. As much as we have adopted each other's kids and and you know, our kids have two legal parents, um, what we aren't able to provide them is um, is the stability in our relationship that legal marriage provides right. and although you know it might have stuck all with the benefits. me yeah. of, as, of as although she stuck with me and I'm stuck with her you know we we would want that kind of you know legal arrangement that everybody else takes for granted and most uh, you know straight couples um, don't necessarily value enough that they want to work at it and then end up just getting divorced so, I don't want to say most, but a lot. Yeah. I, and by you now, know. I think you've been together for 20 years. 20 years. You probably know, right, whether or <coughs> right, not right. it would work. Would work yeah. or not work. Yeah, we and, do. And, you know. But that really gives stability to the kids, so. Yeah. And I think it's an issue that, you know, uh, to, to educate uh, the population that gay marriage, it's not a, it's not a uh, religious thing. Right. It's, uh, it's more a uh, government having its rights right. and, uh, deductions and uh, a lot of benefits that uh, you know marriage gives you I mean yeah between yeah. that and now I think there's like 3,000 mm -hmm. uh, rights that uh, were denied mm -hmm. three three thousand not like 30 not like 300 right. three thousand right. Right. right I mean we have to do separate tax returns you know we get really no benefits from being in the same household and you know so there are a lot of things that would make it a lot easier if we were able to get married. Um, and I mean, look at us, you know, who would we hurt? 
most, most uh, I would have to say, you know, 99% of, um, of gay couples out there are probably, you know, more pillars of society than anything else. And there's really nothing that would be negative in allowing gay people the same rights as straight people so in terms of marriage. 20 years together, successful entrepreneurs, moms and being together, I guess you would qualify. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <Let's> hope. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you for watching this show and I hope you, you enjoyed the interview with Maida and with uh, Simone as much as I did. And let's think about a couple of things, three things that can help us make life more interesting. The fir first point that I hope you got after this interview is what choices do you make when you find obstacles right in front of you? As you see, both Maida and Simone faced many obstacles, but they were very prepared for facing these obstacles. Now, there's different things that people will tend to do. Some people will just let go. They will see the obstacle right in front of them. They think that it's too big. Uh, to be able to overcome it and they just let go. Other people will circumvent around it and other people will just go head on through that obstacle and try to overcome it. The second point is how do we man manage a balance between being judged at times and asserting ourselves to respond to that judgment. The reality is, the truth is, we're all judged at a certain point in time because of our gender, because of our looks, because of our past, because of whatever. The thing is, how do we respond to that? Do we just ignore and let go? At times we may choose to do that. At other times we will want to assert ourselves, particularly in certain situations. And at other times we really are going to need to fight for ourselves as well. So depending on each case, depending on each case in which we are judged, there will be a certain response on our end. The third point is, how do we get things done? How do we fight for what we believe is important? Do we kind of go with the flow and let time pass and feel that it's going to resolve on its own? Or do we really prepare ourselves and plan ahead and, and really make things, we go beyond what is expected so that we can get things done? So lots of food for thought. Thank you for watching my show and I hope this helps you make life more interesting. I'd love to hear from you, so write your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy.